Praise the Lord and good morning or good afternoon. It just depends on where you are. I'm Pastor Stuart Reese III and this is my lovely wife, Wanda. And we're just so delighted that you all were able to tune in with us on this great day. Amen. If you could share with a friend, we are live streaming, we are Facebook Live and YouTube on this great day. They will be blessed along with you. We're just so excited. We hope that this holiday uh, weekend has been a blessing that you ate enough. And <laughs> some of us are probably really stuffed. Not at too time. much. <laughs> stuffed at this time. Yeah. But God is still good. And we're just so excited on what he is doing. Even during this pandemic, yes. we are still blessed yes, as a are. body of baptized believers. God, so and good we know that God is with us and he's on our side. As we prepare for our service on this day, man, our praise team, and we believe we have a tremendous praise team. Yes. And you will be blessed on this day. So stay tuned as we present our praise team. God bless you. Just open up your mouth and begin to give up the glory that he deserves. You open up your mouth and begin to give up the glory.
Because God has been a wonder-working God, even in spite of all the things that are going on in America. I must say today, I would like to address and talk to you as a son, as a father, as a husband, as a pastor and a leader. Amen. Concerning the crisis in America, this is a great country, but there's still some issues and we want to be able to address this with the church. I would like to read a scripture in Micah 6 and 8, which I believe is very fruitful for us in this day and time, uh, all the things that are going on. In the King James Version, and I want to read two versions for you, it says, He has showed the old man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. The message says, but he's already made it plain how to live, what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself seriously. Take God seriously. So as we read uh, this one verse in the book of Micah, uh, you must agree that the church and the people of faith, we need to be part of the work of healing. We're called to be a voice 
for the voiceless. We're called to bring a voice to injustice. When we think in terms of Micah, he speaks directly to the heart of the issues we are facing today. And if you don't know what we're facing today, we're facing police brutality. We're facing racial injustice. We're facing, as we would say from the church point of view, sin is in the world and it's running rapid all over. This scripture, Micah 6, 8, urges us to seek after the heart of God. Not the heart of man, but the heart of God. Micah wrote his prophecy to warn Israel and Judah of his impending judgment because of their disloyalty to God. Let's be real. God is more pleased with our actions than our words. We cannot just be hearers of his word, but we must be doers. We cannot just be people of faith and take no action. Micah mentions three things God requires. You can list this. Number one is we must be just. Number two, we must show mercy. And number three, we must be humble. Justice might seem simple. Many think of justice as being a punishment for wrongdoing. So one has committed a crime, so they receive the punishment they deserve. Then justice is served. The word used for justice throughout the Bible in Micah 6, 8 includes this type of punishment. But it's more than just that. It includes giving people their due or right. This is often referred to as a restorative justice. It seeks out the vulnerable and helping them. The term that would be used for justice in the Hebrew would be mishpat. It's often to speak to the idea of treating all people fairly and as they deserve, being created in the image of God. In Proverbs 3, 31, 19, reads, it says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. We must give people their due, which can include protection and care. God righteously and mercifully reaches out to those in need. We must, as a body of baptized believers, we cannot just have a vertical relationship with God and not have a horizontal relationship with our brothers. So it means that we must care. In Psalms 146, seven through nine reads, it says, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looses the prisoners. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. This speaks of God breaking down unjust systems and restoring dignity to the downtrodden. Micah 6, 8 is far beyond just making sure that bad guys are punished. True biblical justice is when the problems of the vulnerable become our problems. True righteousness is tied to my or our posture towards others in our community. We need to recognize the worth of every life in today's world. God created man in his own image, Genesis 1, 27. We were never intended to be like animals. We realize all lives matter to God and they should matter to us. 
But right now, we need to understand the suffering of specific groups as a first step to helping us all heal. I like the story of the shepherd receiving the one lost sheep that had been wandered or that had been lost or that perhaps had been bruised or injured or almost dead while the 99 are holding a sign that reads, all sheep matters. When one black brother and sister are steadily experiencing injustice and inequalities or inequities, we all need to speak up for them. When we understand the lives of each human being, it's easier for us to feel the pain when they feel the pain. When the church have no problem acknowledging that we live in a fallen world where sin is prevalent, but we cannot bring ourselves to admit that sin can become a cancer in our earthly systems, we must note that none of us are or is immune to sin destructions. We live in a broken world. What I'm saying is that we all are sinners saved by grace. And as we look at somebody that may be less than what we think, there go I, but by the grace of God. I'm just asking each and every one of you that hear my voice today, if we can just do one thing, is just care. This is just a step we almost like being like the good Samaritan. When he was going down the road, he took time out, looked at a man that was almost left for dead, that was injured, but he needed somebody to care. He needed somebody to pick him up and say, hey, you can make it. And what a great deed or a great, uh, attitude of servanthood that the great or the good Samaritan did, realizing there go I, but by the grace of God. As we look in the New Testament, not just only in the book of Micah, but in Luke 4, 18, 19, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. God is for, and we must remember this, he is for the forgotten, he's for the beat down, he's for the shut out, and the left behind. As human beings and as a Holy Ghost filled individual, as a pastor, our country has an ugly history. I want to say that again. Our country has an ugly history. And we need to realize that we've been held back because of race issues. Matthew 25. I like the words of Jesus. He said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Because we are in a crisis in America, there must be a change and how we conduct business. I remember having a crisis within my family. I couldn't locate a relative. In spite of my own personal obligations that needed to be met at that time, I put that aside because I realized there was something more crucial than my own personal uh, agenda at that particular time. God's concern is not that we make it to church, Sunday school, on Sunday morning, doing a family crisis. God's concern is not that we sing loudly 
or pray so eloquently. God's concern is what's going on in our hearts. His concern is how we respond to our fellow brother or sister that is in need. To love mercy moves us out of our comfort zone. Mercy means forgiving someone who does not deserve to be forgiven. That means tipping your waitress or waiter, amen, that you normally would tip or give them double, even though they did a terrible job. Mercy cannot look down upon those that don't look like you. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, as I stated earlier, to love mercy and to be humble. We must live as Jesus lived and love as Jesus loved. We must intentionally oppose racism, though Jesus Christ who empowers us and commands us to walk in love. When black lives matter, or when black lives are dehumanized and treated as though they don't matter, simply because they are black, Christians everywhere, saints everywhere, should be able to stand up and assert that black lives certainly matter, have dignity, worth, and value, just as non-black lives certainly matter, have worth, dignity, and value. Remember, God created all people in his image. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for this time and this opportunity. Lord, we realize that this United States of America is a great country, but we are in a crisis. Lord, as we look around, there is so much going on. Lord, police brutality, racial inequality. People are just hating one another. The church is at odds. The church is in fear. Lord, we need your help this day. And even what has been said and a concern of what is going on in this world. Lord, I pray that each and every saint, each and every Christian will look at themselves and say, what, and ask themselves, what can I do to make this world a better place? Lord, we are praying. Lord, I know even after we get up off of our knees, after we rise up from bowing down, there still must be something else that we can do to show concern. Lord, we don't want to be like a person that has, has struggled for years and has made it, and now we forget about those that need our help. And even those that are saved and filled with your precious gift of the Holy Spirit, let us not forget about our brother and sister that needs the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, and even as we move from this day forward, Lord, we want you to help us, guide us, direct us, speak to our hearts, O oh Lord. Let us get out of our comfort zone. Yes, we may be living good, but let's look at our brother, our sister that is struggling, that single mother that's trying to make ends meet and have three and four children that she cannot survive. That father that desires to take care of his family and he does not have a job and he needs to make ends meet. Lord, we pray right now that we will do better as Christians. Lord, that we will look at ourselves and say, ask again, what can I do? to make a difference in this world. And Lord, I know that you will help us. You will guide us. You will direct us. And we ask these, this prayer and this request and all blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We just want to thank you for tuning in with us on this day. And this is what I wanted to address was from my heart, something that was needed to be said, perhaps maybe three months ago, maybe three years ago, or even when I took the helm as being a pastor. But as we continue to walk this walk, yes, Black Lives Matter, just as well as all lives matter. And we want to do better. And as we continue this journey, God is going to help us. I want to thank everybody, those that have sponsored us financially. We definitely appreciate you and your support. We have other ways that you can uh, give, as you see across the screen. And we must realize that God is going to help us during this crisis. May the Lord continue to bless you and heaven smile upon you.